Good morning, and welcome to the Tab DC. You can connect with the Tab DC on any of our social media platforms to stay connected with the Tab DC. Here's what's coming up here at the Tab. H U U No. Join the Tab DC as we support the real H U Howard University in a football game versus Hampton University. Saturday, September 16th at 3.30 p.m. on Audi Field. The address for Audi Field is 100 Potomac Avenue, Southwest, Washington, D.C. Mark your calendars for Sunday, September 17th at 11 a.m. And connect with the Tab DC for our Back to Church Taste and See brunch. Join us for food, fun, family, and faith. This is going to be an incredible worship experience to nourish your body and soul. Calling all men. You can join Pastor Kevin and the Tab Tough Men for mirroring and modeling a man of faith. Saturday, September 23rd at 9 a.m. in the church sanctuary. We'll also have special guest preacher, Pastor Anthony Moore from Carolina Missionary Baptist Church. You're invited to connect with the TAB DC for the TAB's After Hours Outreach on Friday, September 29th from 9 p.m. until 12 a.m. Join us at the TAB DC as we go out and pray and provide grab bags and snacks for those in need. We will be starting out on 10th and U Street and making our way down to 16th Street. Tickets for the Tab DC's Crab and Seafood Fest is $65 for adults and $35 per child. Tell a friend to tell a friend to meet us at the Tab on October 7th. There'll be plenty of food, fun, and the Tab DC is now offering Youth Zone during service every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. so parents and guardians can worship without worry while our certified staff provide quality care. TAB's transportation ministry is providing transportation to and from service on Sundays. To reserve a ride, call the church office at 202-265-9040 or you can email connect at the tabdc.org by Thursday at 3 p.m. weekly. Remember, you can always join us for the Leveraging Prayer prayer call every Wednesday at 8.28 p.m. Feel free to join us on the Leveraging Prayer prayer call if you have a prayer request or if you would like to just sit in on the call. All you need to do is dial 720-527-5882 and the access number is 324-6677. Stay connected to us here at the Tab DC by downloading our new Tab DC app. Submit your prayer requests, get firsthand access to events and updates, and connect with your ministry by using the Tab DC app, available on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. Anybody excited to be in the house? Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know that there is no one like our God? There is no one like our God. There is no one that loves like our God. There is no one that loves and cares for us like our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Glory to your name, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Um, so at this time, we would actually like to acknowledge our first time visitors at the Tab DC. If you guys can actually just wave your hands. Thank you all for coming. And for those online, our online family, if you can actually just type first time in the chat. Thank you all. So at the end of the service, please connect with our Connect coordinators, Elder Ramsey and Sister Ramsey. If you guys are here, just wave. Perfect. Right here back in the sanctuary. Thank you. So on behalf of our pastor, Kevin Hart, and First Lady Darlene and the whole TAB family, we welcome you all in person as well as those who are worshiping with us online. Thank you. So, also, because today is College Sunday, it is also Selfie Sunday. So, at this, at this time... Okay, at this time, if you guys can actually just get together, um, at least three people, take a picture, take a selfie, and hashtag the tab DC. Thank you. Man, come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, come on, you can do better than that. Let's give God some praise. Come on. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm glad you're here. 
Amen. I'm glad you're here. Now, I'm not just saying that to say it because there's some folk that didn't make it here today. There's some folk, if you look at the news, there's some folk that didn't make it here this Sunday. So I'm truly glad that you are here at the Tab DC this morning. Amen. Listen, my name is Pastor Kevin Hart. I have the awesome privilege to serve here as the senior pastor of, I believe, the greatest church on this side of heaven, the Tab DC. Amen. Amen. My beautiful wife. First Lady Darlene Hart, uh, I don't know if she's moved to Houston, but she's been gone a long time. I don't know. I know we. she went down there because my daughter was having my first grandbaby, and she is not back yet. Amen, amen. We, uh, she's not, she's, she's supposed to be back tomorrow. We'll see. I'll let you all know, but we have, we thank God for our first grandchild, little Tristan. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to keep talking about it. But, you know, folk don't like for you to keep talking about your grandbabies, but I'll be there. This night. I'm flying tonight and go see him. Amen. I'm going to hold him. Amen. I'll be holding him all day tomorrow. His daddy is a New Orleans Saints fan. So I took him a, a commander's onesie. Amen. So I watched the commanders with my granddad. Amen. Amen. Listen, I also, how many, how many college students do we have in here today? Amen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, man, eleven, eight, twelve. Amen. Listen. Now I got a question, because you know they talking. You know, I had a few, I went to the Virginia Union. I went to how okay, let me show y'all my shirt. So, look, HBCU, I went to Virginia Union, I went to Howard, and in December I will graduate, I will get my doctoral degree from Payne Theological Seminary, amen? Amen. But when, every time I go down to the 757, Pastor Khalees, I they I, they always talk about who uh, who the real HU. You know, and I'm going to know HU what? You know, amen. And the only real HU that I know is Howard University, amen, amen. And so, for those of you all that are Howard University um, fans, and you know that Howard U is the real HU, hold your hand up again. I don't know if you all are going to the game next week, but if you want to go to the game, I have free tickets to the HU Howard University game next week, amen, amen, amen. 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 I got you. Amen. So I want you to fill out a connect card. Um, get your information because we're going to get you the card. If you, matter of fact, let me do it like this. If you really want to go to the game with us, we'll take the bus down. Everybody get transportation. And I think I'll hang out next Saturday with y'all. Amen. Amen. Free tickets. We have free tickets. Amen. Can you get their information? Sister Brenda, wave your hand. Can you get there? We're going to get your information so we can transfer. Everything is digital now. And we're going to make sure you get tickets to the Truth and Social Service, Truth and Service uh, game at, at um, Audi Field. Amen. 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 We act right. We might just get some food too. Amen. You know me. I always like to see folk eat. Amen. Amen. Listen, let's give Sister Alicia a hand. Where is she? Wave your hands, Shalise. Y'all look at everybody. Wave back her to her. Wave at her just how she waving. Amen. I said, Sister Alicia, do you mind doing the welcome? She says, getting them. Look, talking on the mic is what I do. She said, you don't mind if I preach a little bit too, do you? <laughs> and she said, I'm a journalist major, so that's what I do. She said, I always. Any, and she said, she called me. I said, anytime you have an available mic, let me know. <laughs> Y'all don't know what I go through during the week with some of these, but look, we thank you. We thank you for your confidence, your clarity. We thank you for the anointing that's on your life. Amen. And we speak that God is opening a door for you to use that gift in rooms that you don't even know. Did he believe you had access to? God is putting you in rooms where your gift and your voice will pay you back. Amen. I believe that. I believe that. I speak that. I speak that in Jesus' name. Listen, this offering time, we got a dynamic preacher, speaker. Amen. Amen. This young man, I believe, is, has a word just for you. Amen. He comes all the way from Atlanta via Houston. Amen. We were talking about Houston. He, um, Amen. He almost talked me into starting the, 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 the tab 
Houston. Um, Y'all pray. He's convincing me that it's, we can do it. Can we do it? Can we do it? He even started to speak. I said, don't speak it yet. Because, amen. Amen. Listen, we are excited to have Pastor Khalees Lemons, the executive pastor of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. With my mentor, uh, Pastor Jamal Bryan, is the senior pastor. Amen. Flew him in last night. Amen. As I was watching its flight, I was kept seeing it get delayed. And I started wondering if I got to drive down there and get him because, yeah, amen, he's going to preach this morning. Listen, it's offering time, amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. It's offering time. Amen, amen. We, um, Brother Derry is doing offering. Can we run the announcement? I know we didn't run the announcements yet, but we want to invite you out next Sunday. Somebody say next Sunday. Next Sunday, amen is our taste and see worship experience amen for those of you all that have not been a part of that amen i advise you to get here early amen we we transform this sanctuary into a banquet hall and doing worship doing the worship experience we serve a catered brunch amen so we want you to come out be a part of that and and take a part of that also on next saturday well 23rd we will have our Tab Tough Men, Men of Faith, uh, men's gathering. We want you all to come and be a part of that also as well. All right? All right. And on the 29th, somebody say the 29th. The 29th, we are taking it to the streets. Who was that? Somebody can tell me what group was that? That side probably won't know. This side would know. Taking it to the streets. The Doobie Brothers, they don't remember that, yeah? That's for the 40 and over, all right, amen, amen. Listen, we are our after hour outreach from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. on U Street. We are walking up and down U Street, amen. You can get anything after hours. You can get you a hot dog, you can get you a drink, you can get you anything you want after hours except for a, 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 somebody out there offering Jesus Christ to you, amen. We getting ready to go non traditional hours amen but well, we're going to make sure that jesus that we are somebody's available to help you and invite you into the greatest relationship that you could ever have after hours amen everyone standing is offering amen for those of you all that don't know we are a ministry that what loves first and does what ask questions later amen through that model through that promise we have been able to touch we have been able to uh, uh, help those that have been unhelped look out for those that have been looked over to touch those that have gone untouched and be the voice for those that have been less left voiceless amen and we've done that because you've continued to pour and sow into this ministry amen amen we are reaching i tell folk all the time uh, we feed uh, over 200 families who uh a day as it relates to our child development center every day my dad my dad he said Kevin all I want to do is feed folk I want to make sure folk got something to eat we had the food bank and uh, and, and and when I said we're gonna stop doing the food bank people thought uh, they, they thought I was going to hell cuz daddy your daddy wanted to feed folk and I said, no, we're going to feed folk, but we're going to, we, through our partnerships and our relationship, we are now feeding four times as many people, three times a day. Amen. That's what you call taking the vision and what? Running with it. Amen. So we are not doing away with it. We are doing and we are using what we have in our hands. And we thank you all for your support. Listen, hey, listen, listen. We have multiple ways we can give here at the tab. We can give through Cash App. You can give through Text to Give. You can give through Givelify. You can go on the website to the tab, dc.org and give. Or you can just write a check and mail it to 2029-11th Street, Northwest Washington, D.C. Amen. With, them all, with those seeds raised, would you just repeat after me? Lord, I thank you. Come on, let's say it again. Lord, I thank you. Let's say it one more time. Lord, I thank you. God, we thank you for these generous givers, God. 
God, we thank you for those that have set aside and been intentional about pouring in and sowing into a ministry, God, that you have your hands on, God. We pray, God, today, God, and we thank you for every giver, God. God, not just those that had it in their hands, God, but even those this morning that might not have had it in their hands, but they had it in their hearts. Meet them at their heart's desires, God. Open up windows of heaven for those that are tithing, those that are taking you at your word, God. Pour out a blessing that there won't be enough room to receive. Father, we believe this prayer lines up with your will, and we are confident that we have what we ask of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our love first texts are going to serve you. If you're online, our virtual worship leader is interacting with you. They're, they're there to pray with you. They're there to help you with any questions you might have. Amen? Amen.
I'm Jesus. Woo! Jesus. Yes, we stand and proclaim. There is no greater name than Jesus. Jesus. Think there is. I can run, I can run and be saved. And be saved. There is a name, there is a name that can heal all my storms. Peace be still. I can call. I can call. Oh, that name. 
Will you clap your hands and give the Lord praise in the sanctuary today? The Bible says at the mention of your name, can we just communicate the name Jesus right now out of our lips? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Father, we love you today. We're grateful to be in your presence. We ask you, dear Lord, on this on this Sunday that you would speak to our heart. We ask you that in this moment that you would speak through me. Father, not unto us, but to your name be the glory. This is our prayer in Jesus name we pray, amen. Come on, will you clap your hands, give the Lord praise, glory and honor. I say, will you clap your hands and give the Lord praise, glory, and honor? This is the day the Lord has made. We have a reason to rejoice and be glad in it. Look at the person beside you and tell them, you smell good, you smell good, you smell good. Look at the other person beside you and tell them, you look good, you look good, you look good, you look good. You look good. Hey, listen, I'm excited to be in Washington, D.C. with the tab. Tab, if you're in the building, make some noise. <laughs> Yo, it's, this is a blessing. This is an honor. I have, uh, for the first time, met your pastor. Um, I just love his spirit, his temperament, um, his desire to do ministry. In probably five minutes, he was just sharing with me vision. Just this is what the Lord has told us to do. This is what we've been doing. And you ought to be glad to be a part of a church and with a leader who doesn't just want to have church but wants to be the church. Can we just take one time to celebrate your pastor, my friend, Pastor Kevin Hart, come on one time. Yeah. Turn around to the person behind you and say, whatever you do, don't talk about my pastor behind my back. <laughs> I will cut you. No, no, I won't. Maybe I will. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> we thank God for the Hart family. And in absence of uh, First Lady Hart, we are uh, thankful for their new grandchild. How many of us are thankful for that? Yes, I love, I love the vision and uh, the direction of the church. I was walking into the office areas in your administrative side and I noticed that it said, uh, love first, ask questions later. Pastor walks up on stage and then he says it. He says, what do we do everybody? And I, and y'all say love first. And then I say, ask questions later. I felt like I was a part of the church. I felt like, I felt like I was a part. So it's good to be here. Um, honored to be sent by Dr. Bryant to share with you today. I want to celebrate my daughter um, and acknowledge her, Harley Monroe. I don't know if she's watching, but if she is, I want to send her uh, some love. She's 10 years old. 
She's 10 years old, and I just want to say what's up. Uh, do me a favor. I want to go to the word of the Lord uh, today. Uh, I want you to join me in the book of Matthew, chapter number 21. I believe it is a custom to stand, so let us stand for the reading of the word of God. And while we're standing, can we thank God for this praise team, this praise team and these musicians? They are grooving. Yeah, they, they are grooving. Amen. Once you got it, say, I'm there. I hear pages still turning. Somebody brought a Bible. That's what I'm talking about. I, <laughs> you know, you were nervous when people used to, you know, ask for scriptures and list them uh, and lift them up uh, back in the day. It was, it was, it was nervous and nerve wracking. Someone say, go to, go to Genesis. You felt good. You got there quick. Someone say, go to Nahum. You're like, oh, Jesus, what is happening? Go to Galatians. Ah! Yeah, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter number 21. I want to look at verse number 12, and I want to read to verse 14. I believe that in this moment, I want to share a couple of things with you. Your lights are amazing, Pastor. They are all, they, they are here for it, okay? <laughs> uh, I, I want to share something with you that I believe is getting ready to speak to your heart. And I want you to prepare yourself in however you feel to capture this moment. I want your, um, your spiritual antennas up for what God is getting ready to do as I believe that this word is for you. Watch what the text says. It says, Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those who were selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer. But you are making it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. I'll read it to you one more time just in case you got lost. And Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, Jesus said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer. But you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to, came to him at the temple and he healed them. For a moment, if you don't mind, I want to use as a subject, you're on something different. Will you do me a favor? Just look at the person beside you and tell them, I know what he said. Tell them that's right. I'm on something different. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Last Friday, I took my wife of 17 years on a spontaneous date. I took my wife, Tiffany, on, if you will, a little adventure. Little did she know our destination would end us in Los Angeles, California, to the Renaissance Tour. I told her the same day of travel, the only thing we're able to take is the clothes on our backs and the phones in our hands. At this particular moment, she did not know what we had planned, but she knew it was something different. Throughout this year, my wife has mastered the Cuff It Challenge, pulled me into it. She has kept the Renaissance album on repeat while exercising. Many nights while in bed, I have been forced to overhear snippets and shorts from her phone 
of random Beehive fans at the concert. I began to hear clips so much, I felt the need that she needed her own personalized experience and should not have to watch this as a virtual viewer only. Unbeknownst to her, we get off the plane and immediately head to the SoFi Stadium. And as we approach the arena, her eyes were widening. All of her teeth are showing. And upon exiting the Uber, we were met with 60,000 fellow fans who were ready to see Beyonce. At this moment, she is awestruck. The crowd is roaring. There is a sea of excitement, an ocean of anticipation, and yet it still feels like it's just the two of us at the concert. And as the show began, the lights flash, and the people danced exuberantly while singing along as if they were hired background vocalists, considering there was only one moment in this whole concert that captured my attention more distinctly than any other. It wasn't the moment we saw the other artists perform. It was a major surprise to see that she had guests to open up. DJ Khaled showed up. Lil Wayne showed up. 2 Chainz showed up. I was surprised to see all of these people open up for her but it wasn't that moment that captured my attention. It wasn't the moment that I saw her daughter dance. I thought it was adorable. I thought if my daughter had been there, she would have been inspired. But what stood out to me was the moment Beyonce performs a song called Energy. As she does energy, everyone is challenged to go on mute. This is where she sings, big waves in the room, the crowd gon' move, look around, everybody on mute. I'm not a Beyonce enthusiast, so I'm catching up in real time on what's going on. My wife is trying to prepare me for what I don't understand, and at this moment, my wife mutes me. I would have thought that Beyonce's whole band and her had moved to an entire new state because at the moment she said mute, the music stopped. The background dancers froze. And the tens of thousands of concert goers stay mute as best as they can for about five seconds until she continues with the next line, look around, it's me and my crew, big inner G. The crowd erupts. I believe some of you know the song. And I found it astonishing that a single individual was able to wield such influence and leave an entire stadium in hush, silence within seconds without rehearsal. This one particular moment arrested my attention as I began to think about our individual lives and the influence God wants us to make in the earth. I then asked, if one voice could stop sound in an arena, what could one voice start on a campus? What could one voice start in a home? What could one voice start in a community. Look around, it's me and my crew, big energy. Maybe the issue with the church's impact in our modern society is that we have adopted little energy. There is nothing worse than having to do something with someone who has the wrong energy. People with the wrong energy make your day longer. The food isn't even enjoyable. The conversation is exhausting. Yes, I need you on my level. But if you are in my crew, on my cohort, or we are a couple, I need you on my energy. <laughs> Check this out. The concert is starting and we're sitting by people we don't know. And the first song was slow tempoed and as it was concluding, I can't make this up, the crowd 
was erupting. The person behind my wife is shaking my wife whom she does not know. And he's saying, can you believe it? This is so exciting. I'm so glad to be here. My wife is now also being pushed by the person behind her and the excitement is in the room. But then the person beside her whom she does not know is now high-fiving her. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. The concert just started. The song is very slow. Why is everybody erupting? Because they understand we have the same energy. Here is the revelation. You need people who are energized at the start of what God called you to do, even if your start is slow motion. Y'all ain't talking to me up in here. That's why when I'm in church, I prefer to worship with people who are on my energy. When I say thank you, since they're on my energy, they say Jesus. When I enter into his courts with thanksgiving, they come on the same energy and enter into his courts with praise. I need you on my energy. When I ask you, how do I look? I don't need no weak energy. I need you to tell me I'm bad. You're fabulous. You look good. I don't need you on weak energy. I don't need you to tell me that it was an okay day. I need you to tell me you were amazing. You're on a thousand. You're killing it. See, because there are some people in your life who are absolutely draining and depleting you. And you need to hear me. You need not little energy around you. You need big energy around you. You don't need pessimistic it won't happen it's too late you need friends that will be like those men in the bible who will climb up the house break in the roof just to see their friends blessed i'm trying to figure out where i am right now i need people who know how to possess big energy energy people that remind me that your ladder will be greater energy people and energized people that will let me know all things work together for my good people with energy that can say I know it's dark right now but you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living will you do me a favor and just check the energy level on your row if I could just get one person on each row just to assess the energy because the Bible says you have to rejoice with them that rejoice. I don't need people that when I'm praising, they look pitiful. I need people who's on my energy. Would you do me a favor? Check your energy right now. I wish I had about 20 people in the room that can praise God because you grabbed your umbrella, you grabbed your bag, you grabbed your cap, and you said, God, I need you to show up in my life and I I'm going to give you big energy. See, when you give God big energy, he reverses it and reciprocates big blessings. They used to say it like this, when praise goes up, uh -huh, blessings come down. If you want God to do something big, then you can't give him something small. So when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he's done for me. Would you do me a favor and say, check your energy. Check your energy. I didn't say check your swag. I said, check your energy. I didn't say check your makeup. I said, check your energy. Ain't nobody care that you got on Balenciaga. I want to know what your energy like. Yeah. You, 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 you gotta, you gotta protect your energy. Craig Rochelle wrote on the art of energy management and subscribes that your greatest deficit to being productive is not your time management, but your energy management. He suggests that it is important for you to know how to work with what sustains you and work around the things that drain you. And if we're honest, too often we are taking phone calls.
tables and holding meetings and investing our energy into people who are absolutely draining us. Hear me. Protect your energy. Hmm? Make up in your mind. I will not allow any person, place, or thing to drain me in this season. I, who am I talking to up in here? Don't invest your energy into a person who only wants your body. Uh -huh. Decline phone calls that deplete you. Did you hear what I just said? I said you have the right in this season to, de to decline phone calls for people that absolutely deplete you. Have you ever seen the phone ring and then as soon as you saw the name or the number, you said, Lord, I just don't have time to deal with this today. The Lord told me to tell you, you have the right to say, not today, not today. You need to put that text message and that person on do not disturb until you are able to handle the proper communication with them because you have too much going for you to let anybody deplete you of big in don't allow them to talk to you like you are a child or a dog stop waiting for them to show up in your life stop waiting for compliments about your uniqueness stop waiting for them to affirm who you are don't let them drain your energy do you think i'm gonna try to figure out if you're gonna respond to my instagram message no the devil is a lie i got too many things to do i can't waste my time nor my energy waiting on you for for the next for the next for the next nine months uh i want you to do this one thing protect your energy I want you to do the second thing. I want you to be responsible with your energy. In the fourth century, Aristotle introduced the concept of potential and kinetic energy. Potential energy happens from position, like a poised basketball filled with the potential to bounce. It's not bouncing but it has the potential to. Kinetic energy, however, stems not from position, but from motion. As you release the ball, its movement represents kinetic energy. Likewise, God did not create you for potential energy, what you could do. God called you for purpose, what you were born to do. You have something to do. And this hour of your life, you have to do something. I need to let somebody know that you are greater than your potential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I want you to get that in your spirit. I said you are greater than your potential. Life isn't meant to be passed by concerning you. You are your great grandparents' wildest dreams. Your life has meaning. I need to tell you, this moment of your life is absolutely meaningful. It doesn't matter where you are in life. This is an absolutely meaningful moment. Whether you are a student, traditional, non-traditional, on probation, in an apartment, or in the dorm. Whether you're in a relationship status of single, married, or it's complicated. Whether you're a business owner or your business is in the red, your life has meaning. Whether you are employed or unemployed. Whether you have a clean record or you just were released from D-block. Your life has meaning. Whether this is your first Sunday at church or whether you've been going to church your whole life, your life has meaning. And this moment you are standing in is meaningful. And you have to be careful to not mismanage a meaningful moment because it is disguised as just an ordinary day. <laughs> because going to brunch is 
eventful. But going after your goals is meaningful. And it's important for you to be able to differentiate between what is eventful and what is meaningful. And where you are standing in this very moment is meaningful. What you are getting ready to walk into is meaningful. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 21, verse number 12, Jesus walks onto the campus of Temple University. I'm sorry, walks onto the campus of Howard University. I'm sorry. It says in verse 12, he walks into the temple. And as you look closely at the backdrop of this story and the conduct of Jesus in this passage, I believe what is happening is transferable to where you are in life to help you manage meaningful moments. Let me give you the context of this moment. Jesus enters the temple before we make it culturally relevant and applicable. I want to put proper theology on it. It teaches us in this moment that it has been 18 years since Jesus' last visit to the temple. In Hebrew, the number 18 means life. Therefore, I suppose when Jesus shows up to the temple, I exegetically imagine someone is thinking, what has Jesus been doing with his life? I haven't seen him. According to scripture, as a Jew, Jesus should have made regular visits to the temple, especially for major festivals, that of the Passover, that of Pentecost and the Feast of Tabernacles. And for 18 years, the Bible does not record one time Jesus ever being in the temple. And you know how people are when they don't see what you do. I haven't seen them in a while. You know I heard. You know how people are when they haven't seen you. I haven't seen them. It's because there's something going on. Mm -hmm. You know how people are when they haven't seen you. You know the last time I seen them, they were, they were lost. Because the last time we see Jesus in the temple, he is not 33. The last time we saw Jesus in the temple before this moment, he's 12. And he is lost by his parents because sometimes even your parents won't understand you. Sometimes even your family won't understand you your movements which is a fact that sometimes you got to keep moving even when people don't understand it's unfortunate that people will discredit you because they can't see what you're doing I'm talking in here and and sometimes people feel too comfortable limiting your purpose if they can't monitor your progress I wish you would hear me God did not obligate you to tell people about everything you're working on and everything you are doing. Can I tell you it's okay to go silent on people? Who is this for? Some ideas you won't be able to share. Some opportunities you won't be able to divulge because just because I didn't post it doesn't mean I'm not making moves. Just because I don't wear designer every day doesn't mean I don't have money in the account. Just because they don't know you're back in school doesn't mean you're not taking online classes. Just because everybody didn't see Jesus feed the multitude doesn't disqualify the fact that he actually fed them. Just because they didn't see Jesus get up from the grave doesn't disqualify the fact that he still got up on the third day with all power in his hand. And today I want to free somebody from the burden of carrying the opinions of ignorant people. I'm talking good up in here I need to tell you don't allow anybody to rush you to show up earlier than God wants you to for 18 years Jesus is not seen in the temple exegetically the last time they saw Jesus in the temple he was a 12 year old boy this time they see Jesus in the temple he's a 30 year old man stay with me the last time they saw Jesus in the temple he was registered as a student uh -huh. this time they see Jesus in the temple he is moving as a principal one minute Jesus is seen as a carpenter 
but the next minute he is seen as a deliverer one minute Jesus is seen as the bread of life but the next minute he is seen as the living water what am I saying I'm saying that if Jesus has the right to evolve so do you I wish somebody would help me preach up in here you don't have to stay where you are or what you were because when God puts his hand on you it doesn't matter that people don't see or understand that you're making moves can I tell you if Jeff Bezos can take a garage bookstore and turn it into a fortune global 2 company then you can evolve too if Steve Jobs can be fired from his own company and then come back 11 years later and lead a company to creating something that you possibly have in your hand right now an iPhone you can evolve too if Oprah can take a hiatus from her talk show to open up her own television network you can evolve too would you do me a favor will you just nudge somebody and tell them they ain't seen nothing yet they ain't seen nothing yet I know you haven't seen me but I've been working on something you didn't come to the party I was studying you didn't come out tonight no I got things to do because I'm working on something the Bible says it this way eyes have not seen yeah and the ears have not heard I came to tell somebody today you ain't seen nothing yet if you think I'm blessed now wait till you see me next year wait till you see me holding the degree in my hand wait till you see the keys for my house wait till you see me start the business wait till you see me five months pregnant I know you can't see it now but you gonna see it later and is there anybody in here that can say God I just want to thank you not for what's in my hand but for what they can't see is there anybody in the room today that can say I'm the epitome of faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for and it's the evidence of things not seen I may be the first generation person to graduate but I'm gonna see it happen I may be the first person to get healed from this disease but we gonna see it happen and if there are any seers that can't see it and if there are any seers that other people don't see it I dare you to lift up praise like we gonna see what they can't see even though they can't see it we still gonna see it I wish you can see what I'm saying Jesus enters into the temple 18 years later he goes into a familiar place then if it's been 18 years since his last time there then it is a sign that he's been there before but this time that he is back at the temple it has new meaning and he has new energy because the reality is he on something different now came to tell you God's getting ready to send you back to some familiar places but by the time you get there when you get there it's going to have a different meaning for you and you're going to have new energy for it I wish somebody would talk to me up in here I, 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 I wish we could just shout and, and you go back to some totally different but no 18 years later Jesus goes back to the same place but he goes back to that place with new meaning and he goes back to that place with new energy and I want to let you know because I want to be honest with the word of God you're going to go back to the same home mm -hmm, but you're going to have different faith <laughs> you're about to go back to the same school but you're going to have different focus you're going to go back to the same money but you're going to have a different grind you're going to go back to the same sickness but you're going to have a different trust Jesus goes back to the temple 18 years later and by the time he gets to the temple he does something different that he didn't do the last time he was at the temple when he gets to the temple this time he says this is my house yeah, 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 yeah. he takes responsibility of his temple I wish I had a church in here when Jesus walks into the temple, he's walking into a building. You don't have a building temple to walk into that you can call yours. 
But you do have a temple, which is your body that you can take responsibility over. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I came to tell somebody, it's time for you to take responsibility with your temple. The rest of the sermon, I want to talk to those who are on something different. Some showed up today because this moment for you is eventful. But some of you deep down in your heart are struggling because you know that what you really need is something meaningful. Some of you showed up today and you said, I'm here because it's college Sunday. But some of you showed up today because you're saying my life needs help. Some of you showed up today because you said, this is what I'm supposed to do on Sunday. Then others showed up today because you're saying, I'm absolutely desperate for more. Some of you showed up today because you feel like this is going to get you heaven points. And then others showed up because it's so meaningful. You don't want to live your life and feel like it was hell all on earth. I'm looking for something meaningful. Can you just do me a favor? Just nudge somebody and tell them I'm not here for an event today. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not here for an event today. Tell them I'm here for something meaningful. Listen, if you just like me because of my hairstyle, I don't want you. I need something meaningful. I, and listen, I don't. I don't around me because we the popular crew I, I need something meaningful I need something meaningful and Jesus does something in a moment of mute people that mute people don't like look around it's me and my crew big energy look around Everybody on mute. And for five seconds, it seems like kids and adults rather just have ADHD. Because they, they can't hold it. They, for some reason, you can't be quiet for five seconds. I, 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 was, I, was, I was mesmerized not by the people's discipline who could go quiet. I was mesmerized by the people who couldn't stay quiet. I want, I, I want to challenge you in this moment because some good is getting ready to happen to your spirit. Yeah, some, some powerful is about to hit your spirit because you are transitioning from the mute phase of life. You're saying, you're saying, yeah, you're saying, you're saying, you're saying, you're saying, you're saying. I've, 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 I, I, I know everybody else want to hold it. I don't. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm just, I'm just so excited. I know, I know that, I know that everybody else is dealing with this, but I, I, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with shame or addiction. I want victory. I, I can't, I can't, I can't stay on mute. I know that everybody else is not reading their Bible, but, but I'll read mine. I, I know, I know everybody else won't come to church on Sunday, but I'm showing up. I'm, I'm getting off of mute. And something happens. Uh, you, can, you can get here. Yeah, yeah, transition there for me. Uh, something happens in this moment that I believe we ought to pay attention to. Is that he says something. Yeah. The first way to get victory over your environment is you learn how to open your mouth. And too often people come in the church looking good, keeping their mouths closed because they have to act like it's all together. How dare us go into the temple and act like we're not already whole? How dare us go into the temple and not act like we're not already perfect? At this point of time, I'm just showing up because it is socially correct that I do. Jesus says, this ain't it. Jesus says, I'm looking around this temple and this temple is not for church. This temple is for deliverance. And the next few moments that's getting ready to take place is for absolute deliverance. Jesus says, my house. Yeah. Jesus says, my house. He takes responsibility. 
stability with his temple. He says, I don't know what my girlfriend going to do. I don't know what homeboy going to do. But he says, my house will be called a house. I, I don't know what the person near you is feeling or thinking. But you know what you're going through needs energy. And you're saying, God, I wouldn't be here if I didn't need a breakthrough. And I showed up at the tab because I need God to shift some stuff. Who am I talking to in here? I need God to change some stuff. I got eight minutes. I, I, I need God to make ways out of no way and the first way that the Lord started to shift the atmosphere is he said something if there's anybody in the room right now that needs God to change something in your life I dare you to shout change it 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 Lord I need you to change a generation Lord Lord look 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 if you want want God to show up you're gonna have to speak up did y'all hear what I just said I said if you want God to show up you're gonna have to speak up and do you think I came through the rain do you think that I flew all the way here from Atlanta Georgia just to have church no baby I showed up for change and is there anybody in the room that's looking for change high five your neighbor and tell them that's what I need I need change that's what I need and he began to pray over three areas see this is what happened usually the Lord says watch it here the Lord says my house will be called a house of prayer and if you ever want to get someone to go to sleep start praying because that's where the devil attacks he doesn't attack when you're playing he attacks when you're praying because what the enemy doesn't want he doesn't want you to have communication with God and I need you to go back to your dorm room I need you to go back to that apartment I need you to go back to that baby's daddy not with your words or with your ideas I need you to go back with a prayed up attitude that before I entered I came with the mind of prayer and for the next five minutes we are about to bombard heaven with three areas of prayer that I believe is getting ready to shift the young adults the college ministry Howard University because if one voice could stop sound I wonder what one voice could start I wish I could get some energy in the room would you do me a favor and tell somebody you're gonna have to forgive me because I didn't come to play church I came to fight and when Jesus walked up into that temple he said come on sucker what you want what what it is though what's up I, I want to let somebody know today that today I ain't playing with Satan I got a son who's in jail I got a doctor's report not in my favor I'm looking at bills that I don't know how I'm gonna pay for and he starts praying in three areas are y'all ready to go to heaven <laughs> because we about to bombard it right now if there's anybody in the room that's ready just to see change in your life say Lord do it do it for your glory do it for your honor do it for your namesake see I'm gonna tell y'all something I want to tell every college student right now that God absolutely shifted my life at Langston University it was on the campus as the SGA activities coordinator that I realized what well, I was inviting Tank and Trina the yin yang twins and avant that I realized God you have more for me if I can get thousands of people to come to a concert and to a homecoming then I can get thousands of people to come home to you and today I want to talk to somebody who's ready for change ready for change in their heart ready for change in their mind I dare you to say I need it I need it I need it I need it oh I need it I need it I need it I need it something's about to break out in this room something's about to break forth in this room I got four minutes I got four minutes but something good is getting ready to happen not to all of the spectators but to those who are ready to bombard heaven with prayer the first area of prayer that we're gonna have is the area of driving out because what God did when he first went into the temple he started driving it out and as I begin to pray over areas to drive out I either want your hands clapping or I want your mouth open the Bible says 
let everything that has breath praise the Lord if you got breath in your body let's go get it I didn't come to play with the devil today I came to give him a nervous breakdown I didn't come to play with the devil today I came to change atmospheres Lord we need you Lord we want you can I flow like that pastor ready to drive it out I want to drive out the spirit of doubt I want to drive out listen if you want to walk in the room walk right now intercessors walk right now I know this feels awkward but that's why it was something different because when Jesus walked into the temple it wasn't church as usual I want to drive out doubt I want to drive out fear I want to drive out addiction I want to drive out the pornography spirit I want to drive out self-sabotage I want to drive out the spirit of suicide I want to drive out the spirit of inadequacy I want to drive out negative influencers drive it out 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 I want to drive out every negative naysayer that's trying to hold your mind you can't even concentrate on your work because you're so focused on what's in your life and I came to serve every evil spirit that has come against your mind your emotions and your will and I tell Satan the spirit of the Lord rebuke you you are cast out and you have no place spirit of the living God fall fresh fall fresh on us fall fresh on us not only do we ask you God to drive out every spirit every spirit and every demon but I ask you God in this moment to overturn the tables to reverse every negative report to reverse every job search Lord I pray that I don't have to seek jobs but I believe God you gonna have jobs seek me I wish y'all would hear me in the spirit right now I pray God you turn over every table I pray God that you let scholarships find me I pray God that you give me favor with the dean I pray God that you give me favor with financial aid I pray God that you reverse the verdict of my child I know they wrong but God deliver overturn it overturn it overturn it I pray God that you make the last first I pray God that you save my baby I pray God that you reverse these grades I pray God that you let me sell this house I pray God lift up your voice Woo. if you need to rush this altar you can do it right now if you need to get to this altar because you're saying God I need something greater I need something more I want something more the Bible says there is a generation that will seek your face and I call on the generation I call on the generation that seeks your face the last thing the last thing first thing he does is drive it out who can't you date no more you have a soul tied to them y'all just screwing you ain't got no conviction you you over here justifying how you do it no God says we got to drive it out no respect God says I got more for you ah! y'all hear me he said I got more for you and I know what I'm saying ain't right because it's not culturally correct but forget the culture if they gotta cancel you for being the king's kid let them cancel you if they gotta talk about you because you walk in holy let them talk about you but in this season oh. last thing uh -huh. so you have to protect your energy you have to protect your energy 
You have to be responsible with your energy. But you also have to transfer your energy. I told you that Greek philosopher Aristotle talked about potential and kinetic energy. Potential energy is stored and cannot be transferred. But kinetic energy is stored and is transferable. When you come to the house of God, you ought to crave transferable connections. Ah! I want you to do me a favor. It's about to get weird in here. I want you to grab one person by both hands. And I want you to tell them, I'm getting ready to pray for you. Look them in the eye. Tell them I'm getting ready to pray for you. Tell them these words, tell them. Tell them I don't know all that I'm getting ready to say. But know whatever I say will have kinetic energy. Tell them and I believe that what's getting ready to happen in your life is going to bless you. Because in heaven is transferring to my hand and everything in my hand is transferring to you i wish y'all would help me up in here would you just tell them that some good's about to happen can't you feel it on the count of three i want you just to say one word and i just want you to say it over and over and over and over again this one word is getting ready to give the devil a nervous breakdown about you because the devil doesn't want you to get this word this is not a natural moment this is a spiritual moment and something spiritual is about to hit your natural situation let that say are y'all ready for it one two are y'all ready for the word when i say three i'm gonna tell you the word and as you hear them say it i want you to receive that that's what god is telling you about your situation are you ready i said are you ready i said are you ready tab i need you to take the tab off are you ready one two the word is yes three tell them yes 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 is my baby gonna get healed yes are my grades gonna improve yes am i gonna get over depression yes will i break this addiction yes i transfer yes to your life yes to your mind yes to your ministry yes to your business yes to your purpose yes to your miracle yes to your blessing yes 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 sweet jesus sweet jesus miracles are breaking out i said miracles are breaking out miracles are breaking out shake that hand and tell them i got you i got you it may be dark but i got you it may get weary but i got you you may not know what to do but god told me to tell you It won't always be like this. It won't always be like this. Would you let that hand go? 
And would you just clap your hands like victory is yours? Would you open your mouth like victory is yours? Will you shout unto God with the voice of triumph like you got your answer today? I dare somebody to shout in this room. I dare you to lift up your voice. I can't hear nobody. My answer is yes. Like this. My answer is yes. Sooner or later. in my favor. It's turning around. Turning around for me. Listen. Listen. Very quickly. Maybe this is you. Bring it down just a little. Sooner or later, sooner or later, turn in my favor. Yeah, it's turning around for me. Listen very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. I want you to hear me. I'm not on mute. My mic is loud. You don't have a relationship with Jesus. You need to give your life back to Jesus. You don't have a church home and you're saying today, I need to do something. My mic is not on mute. I'm coming with big energy. I need you right now. If you fit one of those categories, I need you to move to this altar. If I'm speaking to you, you're saying, I got to get, I have to get my life back right with the Lord. I need to give my life to the Lord. I need you to get here right now. Come on, clap your hands like they're already coming. Thank you, daughter. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Come on, clap your hands, clap your hands. Come on, come on, don't delay. Don't delay. This is a meaningful moment. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, love. This moment means something. But you're getting ready to go back to the same space that seems at moments meaningless. But because you have a new mind, you're going to understand how meaningful this is. I don't want you to go back home or wherever you're going to on low energy. Hold your head up. Put your shoulders back. Lift your chin and say, it's the same me, but it's a new mind. Ah! It's the same car, but I got a different way I feel about it. Listen, somebody's getting ready to take you somewhere, but I want to pray with you, God, whatever they stand in need of. Come here. Come here. In Jesus' name, turn it. 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 In Jesus' name. Tears in your eyes. Turn it. Listen, they're going to take you somewhere. Come on, clap your hands. Give God glory like it's getting, it's getting ready to turn. Listen, how many of you were blessed by that word? I want you to do me a favor for those who can. And for those who feel the unction of the Spirit, when Jesus comes into the temple, he doesn't do what they expected him to do. One of the most irritating things is when you want something your way and then they go away that you didn't expect or like. And what we would have hoped that Jesus would have done was go back in that temple trying to teach. 
He doesn't. He shifts the atmosphere. And he does it 18 years later. He takes a total turn. When we give our life to Jesus, we take, we take a, full, a full turn. It's not, it's not 360 because we would end back in the same place that we started. It's 180. And how many of you all can say, I need God to do a 180 degree turn on my life. I need it. I want you to do me a favor as you're connected to my faith. I want to challenge you. For my college students, I want you to sow a seed. Hear me. I want you to sow a seed of $18. Hear me. For all of those who are in college traditional. I want you to hear me. I believe that seed brings harvest. When you sow something into the ground, you give it an opportunity to grow. And for all of my non-traditional students, whether that's because you're taking classes or you're in church as a disciple, we're all a student to something. I want you to sow a seed today of $180. Some of you are saying right now, I, I didn't expect that. Neither did they at the temple. But what they didn't expect was exactly what they needed. I want to challenge, I want to charge your faith right now to prepare to sow a seed. Will you do me that favor? If you're going to sow a seed today that is significant, get your best seed of $180. And as you prepare to get ready and sow, I want you just to come stand up here. You're giving your best seed closest to it. Come on. Thank you, Pastor. I see you. I see you. Come on. Who are you? I'm sowing that seed. I, I have some deadlines I need to meet. I'm sowing that seed. I have some miracles I need met. I'm sowing that seed. I didn't plan on sowing that seed. I actually was trying to go to brunch, but I'm, I'm going to do that. I want everyone to get your best seed of $180. I want you to come up here as quick as you can. Mm -hmm. I want you to sow it. I want you to sow something that says, I am connecting to this man of God's faith. That what is in that word is kinetic. It's transferable. That as God changes that temple, he'll change this one. I see you. I see you. I see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for trusting God. It's not equal giving. It's equal sacrifice. Get your best seed. And as soon as you have it, I want you to come. I want to give you another 60 seconds. Some of you are saying right now, God, I trust you. But this is on something different. God is saying, I know. So is your destiny. Yes, God. Let's pray over this offering. Father, I thank you for every seed sown today. I thank you for those who have the $180 seeds. I thank you for those who gave their best $180 seed. And I thank you, God, for those who did not have to give, but had a desire to give. Lord, make ways with this seed. Overturn, flip, and cast out all that needs to be done. Do it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Give God glory in the room. I want you to give something, whatever it is. I want you to give something in this moment as God is going to bless you. I believe it. Thank you so much for having me, Tab. I pray that you were blessed. Were y'all blessed this morning? Were y'all blessed this morning? God bless you. May heaven smile on you. May heaven keep you.
Amen. Amen. Just let's send it at the for those of you all that are given by Cash App, by electronic devices, those that you had it, you can sit it on the altar. Amen. I love first technicians will come around with the basket. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand praise. Come on, come on. I love first technicians are coming with the baskets. Amen. 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 I love first technicians. Amen. Are coming at this time. Listen, we thank you so much for being present for this poor, a major poor that the Lord has has poured out today. Use the man of God. We pray that God strengthens and restores the man of God. Amen. 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 Listen, we're getting ready to go. Listen, we have some 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 college cupcakes. Amen. Amen. College cupcakes. Amen. We have some custom made cupcakes with a. Uh, um, I got a lot of them with HU because that's what that's the real HU, amen. And I got some with uh, Bethune Cookman. We're gonna ha want you to go and get some of those, amen, and and enjoy yourselves. We thank you. Next week is Taste and See. For those of you all first time visitors, please our Connect coordinators. They just have a a gift basket bag that they want to give you. Um, Sister Brenda, did you get the ones for the? Uh, the game, the 15 or 12 for the game. Did you get their names? Get their names before they go. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and go home. You know what time it is. Commanders about to play. Amen. 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 Hey, I thought it was something deep. The Washington Commanders are about. Amen. We have a Green Bay Packer problem in here, but he'll be all right. Amen. He's going to get saved next week. Amen. Amen. Just look at your neighbor and say, I'm on something new. I'm on something new. Amen. Amen. Just look at him and tell him I'm on something new. I want to say this before we close. Sister Yolanda, I speak this. God has done major things with less. God specializes in doing great things with little. I called you up because you are an intercessor. There's an oil on you. You can't see with your natural eyes, but you see more than most of us can see with our natural eyes. You might have a disability with your eyes, but sometimes that's the best thing that God can use so you can see clearly. And I wanted you to come because you are interceding. So you needed somebody to walk with you, but your intercession, I believe, worked. I believe that God is going to use you. So I speak that over your life, that this... There's a greater anointing. There's a greater a calling on your life in this season. Receive it. All hearts and minds, thank you, God, for this awesome experience. God, we thank you for what was poured out on today. God, we pray, God, that we do not just walk out and leave what you have given us, but we take it with us throughout the day. God, as we leave this place, we will never leave your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Just hug somebody and say, I'm glad you were here today. Amen.